So in this video, we're gonna be looking at attenuators and we're gonna be answering a few questions. So what is an attenuator? Why do you need to use them? And what happens if you don't use one? What happens if we don't use the attenuator? Let's find out. But I'm doing this so you don't have to. So attenuators have two main functions and we only really rely on one of those for automotive use. So the main function is for reducing the input voltage on the scope to protect your oscilloscope. And the other use, which is mainly used in electrical engineering, is for measuring high frequency signals. And you might need to come across this feature when measuring flex ray. So the two, two main types of attenuator you'll come across, this is the most common type, the 20 to one attenuator. Uh, this is a pretty cheap one I got from uh, Hamtech. Uh, links for all these are in the description below. And you might have come across a lead like this before. So this is like a standard oscilloscope probe um, you wouldn't really get in an automotive kit. And what that actually has... So the basic idea is that it would reduce the input voltage to the scope by a factor of 20 or a factor of 10 if you were using this lead. So what the attenuator is actually made up of is a couple of resistors, actually one in line and one in parallel to the ground side. In fact, if you go and check out a friend of mine's channel, Gadgets Playlist, he will show you how to make them. It's quite interesting. So I've connected up to the 12 volt terminals on the car. I've also set it to 20 volts on the oscilloscope scale. And you can see there we've got a flat line at 12 volts, 12.4 to be precise. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this attenuator and... It's just a BNC connection. Unplug the lead, plug the attenuator on, and what we can see now is that the voltage has been reduced quite a bit. So if we just get that cursor there, around 600 millivolts, so that's 0.6 volts. If you do the basic maths, 12 divided by 20, it's 0.6. So what we've got now then is we know that we've got 12 volts coming in on the lead, but we're measuring 0.6 on the scope. So there are some settings on most oscilloscopes which will allow you to compensate for that fact. So if we just go into the channel A probe settings, and here we've got times 20 you'll see there there's times 10 as well for if you're using the times 10 probe so if we select the times 20 we can see there that we're pretty much back at what we were measuring before 12.59 volts so pretty accurate so if you want to see more videos about automotive oscilloscope diagnostics make sure you subscribe that way you'll be able to get down in the comment section and ask any questions you've got so other places that you uh, need to use these little things is anything that really exceeds the input amount of your oscilloscope. So we said this was 20 volts, uh, your 4425A, so your, your PicoScope automotive uh, scope, that will go up to 200 volts. So you, you, there's not many times you, you would actually need one of these. And I think the maxi scope that goes up to about 100 volts input. The old 62, 6022BE that I used the other day that had a maximum input of 35. So all you need to do is times the maximum input voltage by whatever attenuator you're using, in this case 20, which will tell you how much voltage you can measure safely. And the main things we want to be using these attenuators for are injectors where you've got the induction spike after the injectors fired. So any direct injection in injectors, they tend to be well over 12 volts. Uh, piezo injectors can go up to 150. I've had a belt off one of them before. Um, and the petrol direct in injection injectors. And pretty much anything with a solenoid. And that really is, again, only if the spike exceeds the input voltage of your scope. And remember the main use that we need these in automotive is to protect your oscilloscope. So the input voltage maximum on this PicoScope 2204A is 20 volts. So it's not a lot. And it's one of the main reasons people might tell you that it's not for automotive. So with this attenuator connected, we actually do 20 times 20, which gives us up to 400 volts measuring voltage. So let's set it up on the diesel injector of this car here. It's a solenoid injector, so it should be around uh, 60 volts. So let's connect it up to the injector and see what we get. OK, 
Okay, so we've got the attenuator connected. Uh, we're connected up to the injector. I'm just going to get the trigger on here. Okay, so I think we've just got to adjust the time setting slightly. Okay. So I removed the probe settings on the scope. So we're back to the times one and we can see there that we've only got about two volts going into the front of the probe. Now we know that there's way more than two volts to really activate those injectors. So let's change it to a times 20 probe. Okay, so we've gone over the scale there. What that should allow us to do is it should open up the higher voltage settings for the voltage scales there. You can see now we've got up to 100, 200, up to 400 volts, like we just said. So I'm gonna select 100 volts. And there we go. Okay, so my memory deceived me a little bit there. These are activating at around 40 volts. Um, and it's always better be safe than sorry. So whenever you're working around these high voltage injectors, don't probe them while the engine's running. Um, I have had a belt off one before. Woke me up. So we're going plus 40 and... Uh, and the induced spike is going minus 85. What happens if we don't use the attenuator. Let's find out. I don't advise that you try this on your own oscilloscopes. Um, and PicoScope have probably got my name numbered now and um, warranty is void. <laughs> but I'm doing this so you don't have to. Okay. All right. So we do have some measurements there. Let's remove the probe settings and go to 20 volts we can see there that it's not very happy with what's going in there so let's just pause it and see what we've got scroll back through we see there look but it's not picking up what's coming into the scope the scope's not capable of measuring that high voltage and that's exactly why you need one of these so we saw there that actually um it it was okay and I've exceeded the input voltage of this scope a number of times and it survived. And I do remember seeing somewhere that they, they do actually engineer them to withstand a sustained voltage above the maximum uh, for a short period of time. But if, if you're going to connect that up to a permanent 40 volts and just leave it there and I can't see it was it would last very long.